Moving on. Moving on. So this is a clip that I found kind of interesting. And I want, I want you guys to get your opinion on this one. Joe Rogan sits down with this this guy. I don't know who the guy is. Don't ask me who it is because I haven't checked out the new episode. And um, they start talking about people on social, oh, social media in general and how people present themselves and whatnot, blah, 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 blah. And obviously, according to the Fire and the Kid people on the subreddit, they put like a dicey, dicey flipping title on it. But it also feels like a little bit of a random shot at someone like a Brendan, right? And I'm interested to know, like, let's say we all think, you know, that kind of crass materialism is somewhat bad, right? Um, especially if you purport to be, because, you know, it's not really bad in all honesty anyway, but stand-up comedians have this weird thing where they try and pretend like they're working class. You, you, I don't know if you guys have the same feeling, but I get, I get the I get the kind of impression that they like to pretend like they're the everyman, right? When they're not really, because most of them make millions of their podcasts and they make a lot of money on tour. So this whole idea that they make, that, you know, they're the average person and they make like 20 grand a year and stuff is fucking nonsense. But regardless, it, it's still like a bit of a taboo in their scene to be a little bit showy with your money, even though we all know they got money. So they try and pretend that they don't have money. So yeah, that's it. He has Zachary, sorry, the guy is Zachary, Zachary Levi, Zachary Levy or Levi, whatever one of them two. So is it better if you're a stand-up comedian that earns a lot of money, just be upfront and say, you know what? I'm not relatable to you. Me and you are not the same in terms of consumers. So in terms of um, me being a talent or me being a star, you being a listener. I live in a massive mansion. My kid goes to the best private school. My wife doesn't work. Um, I, I, you know, I, I paid off my mum's house, all this sort of stuff. I drive an amazing car. I've got my own private jet. I have a fleet of tour buses. Is it, is it better to be upfront with that kind of stuff and show it on your social media? Or do you do what Joe Rogan does who kind of hides everything. Like, you don't, you don't, like, Joe Rogan has an incredible car collection. He has incredible homes. Um, he does incredible things, but he never ever shows off, of, like, it on social media. And he might talk about it here from here and there. You might see some clips here and there from old stuff he's done in the past, but he doesn't, like, put it up on Front Street, online, or anything. If anything, the only thing that you see where he might be, have, he might have a little bit of money is those kind of really kind of, um, cushy hunting trips he goes on, right? Because he goes to, like, really pristine locations and all these kind of places. So I want to know, what do you guys think? Is it better to be relatable to stand up comedian or podcaster? even though we all know you have money or is it better to pretend like you don't have any money in order to make the, in order to make people feel not bad about themselves? Because I feel like this clip is a bit of a, as much as people don't like Brendan Shaw with these Ferraris and stuff, I think this is a bit out of order personally for me because you're throwing shots at your friends. Do you know what I mean? But then you're also just doing the same thing that they do, but you just hide it. At least Brendan shows off his Ferrari. You've got probably 17, but you, people just don't know. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like performative way. Well, and we all celebrate it, which is the saddest thing, honestly. Yeah. I mean, look at how Instagram, many, Instagram all yeah. of it. I mean, we, it's, if you drive a Lambo, how many likes do you, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, we, and we all also, I mean, not, nothing against people who own Lamborghinis, but it, you know, we all kind of sense that that's flashy anyway. We, why are we so caught up in that? And yet it still is getting all the likes and getting yeah. all the shares and people still, particularly young people are still like gunning for that aiming for that like i want to yeah. be that cool it's like no you don't that's not the kind of life that you <laughs> want to be living or aspiring to it's not real they're not even living that life that like if you're posing in front of a lamborghini just by virtue of the fact that you're posing yeah yeah you're not posing. really living your life posing this is fake lots and lots of poses you're standing there yeah. in like a, a fancy pose yeah. Yeah. to show how yeah. badass you look are. at my lambo man yeah and perhaps you have a bandana and no shirt on. <laughs> Maybe you're really wild. <laughs>
that they find annoying about each other. But then when fans like ourselves point it out, this is the thing I'm, this, this, I think this is the point I'm getting at. The thing that really annoys me about this sort of stuff is that when fans like ourselves point out how annoying and how redacted it is to be posting up with your Ferrari or to be, you know, displaying all your wealth online and stuff or to be whatever it may be, right? Or, or you know, complaining about the homeless or whatnot, whatever it may be. I feel like it's like a double standard. Do you know what I mean? It's like they're allowed to insult each other, Right? But we're, we're not allowed to insult them. Do you know what I mean? We're not allowed to poke fun and kind of point at the hypocrisy. Whereas they can do it to each other and they do it all the time. All the time. Do you know what I mean? Like all the time behind their backs on one of the most famous podcasts in the world that's listened to millions of people, maybe billions of people. And you're basically calling out your friends who we can kind of figure out who you're talking about in a roundabout way. Maybe it's other people. Maybe it's people that we don't know about. Fair enough. But I don't know, man. I think it's a little bit out of order. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me see what you guys are saying in the chat about this whole thing because... Maybe I'm maybe I'm just chatting on my ass about this thing. Uh, what people saying here? Um, yeah. So Leah Garcia says, "I think if you worked your way up, there's nothing to apologize for. You can show it off or not. Agree with that one." Robot says, "No, just be funny, and that's all. Fair enough." Exercise Shaman says, "Old school philosophy: rich man never tells how much money he has, um, then ever, uh, then, then has, cause then no one will ever be envious. That's true." I mean, people can still find a way to be envious of you regardless if you don't show them what money you have. But still, I understand that kind of um, position. Um, MM says, I like how Segura does it. He shows some of it re in relation to work, but not personal showing. Exactly, cool. That's a good one. Segura shows it off in a kind of weird way because his interests clearly show you that he's somebody that has money, but he also doesn't show it off too much. You know what I mean, but they know, you know what I mean, like how Christina talks about stuff, you know that she's got, you know, expensive tastes. Clearly, you know, Tom Segura's hobbies are expensive too, but he's very clever how he does these things. Maybe even more subtle than Burt, because Burt kind of falls off of doing that things a little bit. Um, was it um, the DX, the DXJC5 says, it just depends on your comedy style. Some need to be relatable to be funny. Others aim to be condescending. Cool. Um, Seth Pollock says, don't you think Papa Show's media is opposite of Rogan's approach? Yeah, of course. Pa Brendan Schultz is opposite, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Are you, are you allowed to... On your la if you have those things, regardless if you don't think he's funny or not, if you if you have those things and you want to show them off, you're within your rights to do so. Do you know what I mean? It's not a crime. Um, it continues a free old fake smiling in the Instagram post. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Mm -mm -mm. Mark Brennan says, I paid 450 for it on a DMX Rough Riders wrestling belt for views on my channel. <laughs> okay. Most says, I'll keep my chicken tingers to myself. That way, when I gain weight, to one will know why. Food for thought. Fair enough. I think for a certain perspective, Brendan is being unprotected. Rich guy, true. Chris Deshaun says, I realize that comics who come from money play it down and humble humble guy persona. But that's the thing, though. Chris Deshaun, we all know they're not humble and we all know they don't not come from money. That's a problem. A lot of those comedians who actually come from money, with the exception, I think the only one that's actually ridiculously... um. Not like that is um what's his name Nick something is it Nick Crow is it Nick Crow that comedian who like his dad is like a famous person like he's like he's like fucking Hollywood to the T do you know what I mean and he seems to be fairly cool like he seems to be a very well adjusted type of person no one has any bad words to say about him he tends to be booked and busy and from what I've learned from reading this I read a book about CAA a while ago I haven't actually finished it but I remember reading it and it kind of a roundabout way they said something like um. If you don't see, I think, yeah, I think I read it on a CAA book and also met, heard it in a podcast. Someone said something like, if you know somebody, if you're a fan of an actor, if you're a fan of a famous actor and you don't see them being booked a lot, right? Um, you would, uh, it's fair to assume that they're, dick, they're pieces of shit behind the scene. Because a lot of that stuff is a reward. Like a lot of those roles, as much as it is for talent, it's more so a reward on you being a nice person, uh, being someone that people enjoy to have around on set. And usually the guys and girls who usually are pains in the asses on set are the ones that don't get the, you know, are the ones that don't get the gigs usually. That's what people usually kind of sit on that kind of, kind of regard. But I don't know, man. Maybe you guys think it's a not, but I, I don't know. I just think it's a little bit, if it was me and I was Brendan, I'd be a little bit pissed off. Do you know what I mean? On one side, he's probably texting somebody like a Joe about recommendations for cars he should be buying. But then on the other side, little does he know, Joe's kind of laughing at him and how 
you know, new, rich and crass he looks because he's like showing off his Ferrari on his Instagram. It's like, so what? You don't like the Ferrari. It is what it is, isn't it? I don't understand why that's a bad thing. Um, but yeah, anyway, moving on. 